This is module six, lesson 16. Read the objective with me while I read it out loud. I can construct perpendicular line segments and analyze relationships of the coordinate pairs. So we're gonna continue with those uh, perpendicular lines from yesterday, creating the perpendicular lines, and then using the coordinate plane looking at the relationships between the points. All right, let's start with some fluency. We're going to start with make making larger units, which I know you're looking at this going, wait, what? But one half is the same as what, what other fraction? If you were to say two fourths, what is another way that you would say two fourths? Well, you would say one half, right? So two fourths in larger units is one half, correct? All right, I want you to take this idea and I want you to come down and I want you to take the fraction and change it into a larger unit, which usually means you're going to end up with a smaller denominator, isn't that right? Okay. Go ahead and take a few minutes, take about four minutes and then come on back, do your best. All right, so let's check your work. So one half is the same as two fourths in larger units is one half. Two six is really one third. So two six in larger units is one third. Two tenths is one fifth. So two tenths in larger units is one fifth. So five tenths is a half, three ninths is one third, six ninths is two thirds, five fifteenths is one third, 10 fifteenths is two thirds, three twelfths is one fourth, nine twelfths is three fourths, eight twenty fourths is one third, 16 twenty fourths is two thirds, seven twenty eighths is one seventh, 21 twenty eighths, is three fourths and 25 thirtieths is five six. So you, this needs to become automatic. So hopefully this is in your back pocket and you've got this down by now. Moving to the next part of our fluency, we are going to draw some angles. So if you have your ruler, Go ahead and get that out. So we're going to draw three lines today. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna start over here today. Start to the right. And I want you to draw a about a three inch line. Here, a three inch line here and a three inch line down here. And we're gonna take a look at, at perpendicular lines and angles, things that we talked about in the lesson 14 and 15. So we're going to now take this first line segment and we are going to label it A, B. Then what I want you to do, if you have your protractor, let's line this up and let's draw a 30 degree angle going in this direction. So if you notice, I'm using the 30 on the bottom going to the left. And you know what? I didn't mark my Let's mark my center, right? Okay. All right, so I have a 30 degree angle right here. How's that look? It's less than 45 and it's less than 90, so it's definitely in an acute angle, correct? Now, what would I have to add 
what other angle would I have to add in order to get to 90 degrees? Well, hopefully you just said 60 degrees. Okay, on our next line, we're going to label it A, B, and now we are going to draw, we're going to draw another 30 degree angle. Let's start in the middle. And we're going to go in the same direction again. We're going to go to the left. All right, so here's a new 30 degree angle. Now, Let's draw a line below line segment AB. And let's make it, we're going to try to create a perpendicular line going downward. So if I was trying to find a perpendicular line, a perpendicular line actually measures how many degrees? You're right. A perpendicular line measures 90 degrees. So if I have 30 here, what does my angle have to be here down below? You're right. It has to be 60 degrees. So now, I'm going to draw another angle and I'm going to measure this 60 degrees. So what did we just create? We created perpendicular lines. All right. I think we're going to have to move this line back over here. So let's move our line and let's move it up a little bit. Let's move it up just a bit. Label it A, B again. All right, so let's create another 30 degree angle. Let's mark our vertex. Let's draw our 30 degree angle over here. Okay. Here's our 30 degree angle. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to do the same thing as before. I want to create another perpendicular angle. You could go up, you could go down. So, because we always go up, let's try it going down again. So, it's got to be 60. And it doesn't, you're, you don't have to pull your line all the way down. You could go this far too. Okay. Now, this we just drew, it's a 60 degree angle. We could draw another 60 degree angle up here, create perpendicular lines. Now, what we're gonna do from here is we're going to use, we're gonna use some sort of straight edge and draw a line segment perpendicular to AB with the endpoints at CF. So if we label this, let's, I'm going to have my, I'm going to have this end right here and I'm going to label that C and I'm going to label this F. So if I were to use my straight edge here, what did I just create? I created a triangle, right? And this one is 90 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle in this corner. And what we learned on our last lesson in lesson 15 is 
the triangle, the angles have to add up to what? You're right, they have to add up to 180 degrees. Well, we already have 30 plus 60, which is 90. Whoops. So that leaves us 90 degrees. So then we'd have to figure out what these two angles equaled. So this is just a nice review of yesterday and creating that acute angle, remembering what an acute angle looks like. What does a perpendicular line have and what are the rules for a perpendicular line? Well, it creates, has to be 90 degrees. A perpendicular line creates an intersection at 90 degrees. All right, next. We're going to complete the table here. Complete the table for the rule. Y is one more than half X. So one, Y is going to be one more than half. So one more than half. So how can I find first, how do I find half of a half? What is half of a half? Do you remember this? So one half times one half is one fourth, right? So the rule y is one more than half x. So what is half of x and add one? So our y would be one and one fourth. All right, what I want you to do is I want you to complete the table and draw and draw a line to connect the points. Okay, and then come on back and check your work. All right, so, oh, I forgot to plot my, plot my points, hold on, all right. Here we go. So I solved this by going one half times one half is one fourth plus one is one and one fourth. You can't multiply unless you change it to a uh, improper fraction. So three halves times one half is three fourths plus one is one and three fourths. You have to change this to an improper fraction. Nine fourths times one half is nine eighths, which is really one and one eighth plus one is two and one eighth. Three and a three times a half is three halves, which is one and one half plus one is two and a half. Then plot the points and draw the line. It's going up at a very small steep, a uh, very small slope. Then we have Give the y coordinate for the point on this line whose x coordinate. So if the give the y coordinate for if this were to go all the way up, all the way to 42 and a fourth, going along the x-axis, what would the y-axis be? So using the rule, I took 42 divided by 2 is 21. Then one fourth divided by two is one fourth times one half, which is one eighth. 21 and one eighth plus one is 22 and one eighth. So if something here didn't make sense, go back, rewatch the video, try, try this out again and make sure you know how to do this. Um, I'm sure this will be on the test that we take at the end. All right, this will do it for our, for our fluency for module six, lesson 16. When you come back, make sure to have your problem set packet with module six, lesson 16 template. It's page 256. You're going to want some tools when you come back, even a straight edge. Um, and then if you have out, if you have your triangle, your RST triangle, 
RTS, RST. If you have this triangle and your other level triangle, you can pull those out as well. All right, come on back for concept development.